Okay, so we're working on another part of the um, proof of concept here. So this is the portable repeater. Um, right now it's on GMRS, but uh, it could be used on uh, 70 centimeters uh, in the amateur band. Uh, presuming that you've got an amateur radio license and you're using one of the uh, uh, itinerant uh, repeater pairs or portable temporary repeater pairs, which I believe are uh, 440 decimal 75, uh, 440 decimal 8, and then the input, of course, is going to be uh, 445 decimal 75 and 445 decimal 8, uh, respectively. So. Those are the uh, the two pairs if you were gonna run um, a portable or temporary repeater on uh, 70 centimeters, but we're using GMRS. What I did this time was I made some changes to the squelch setup. Uh, the receive radio is now listening for 167.9 as the tone to open the radio, and the transmit uh, radio is now transmitting 110.9 so it's a different it's a, a cross uh, tone split tone so the input and the output are different tones of course the input the output tone doesn't matter as much um, radio check radio check Radio check, one, two, three, four, radio check, one, two. Of course, now it's not working. Let's try this again. Radio check, one, two, three, four, radio check, radio check, radio check, one, two, one, two, radio check, one, two, three, four, five, radio check, over. Adjust this. I'm sorry. Radio check one two three four. Radio check one two three four. Radio check one two one two. Radio check over. And you can see where the radio check one two one two. Radio check one two one two. Radio check over. You can see how it's uh, it's transmitting a 110.9, but the input is, uh, and I'll just dial this in. Sorry about that. Just to show the input is a different tone, and you don't have to do this, of course. show if I were to use a different tone let's do uh, 67.0 radio check one two three four radio check one two one two radio check one two one two radio check over turn off the attenuator Uh, some other activity. I thought I heard some other activity on the frequency there. This is, of course, FRS channel 21. In addition to being one of the eight GMRS repeater outputs, I could have sworn I heard some some chatter. Week, but uh, it was there. Let's see. Make sure I've got my shave sculpt off.
Repeater check one, two, three, four. Repeater check one, two, three, four. Repeater. Power up. Uh, repeater check one, two, three, four. Repeater check one, two, three, four. WRVQ932. Then we'll do it. Uh, Uh, radio check one two three four five. Radio check on channel two one. Radio check on channel two one. WRBQ nine three two. Not sure if uh, what I was hearing, but yeah, that's just a uh, again a clumsy demonstration of the uh, the tone squelch. Uh, split tone and that's really only something you want to run if you have a uh, compelling reason to do so um, uh, compelling reasons include that i'm not limited to uh, how do i say this um let's say that you want to set up a repeater but you don't want it to be an open use repeater well uh, getting a radio that that scans, you know, tones is, is pretty straightforward. So uh, this one is a good example. It shows me the tone, the kind of the active frequency, the Obviously, you saw it decoding the tones I was using, but. You know, a modern receiver like this one is going to show you uh, whatever, you know, tone or, or DCS code uh, is being used. So if your repeater transmits uh, the same, you know, let's say that you have a repeater set up with a tone uh, on, the, on the input. You have to transmit a specific tone in order to open up the repeater. If you have a repeater set up for carrier squelch, well, in my personal opinion this is just an opinion that's stupid you should always have a tone uh, required on the input always um, even regardless of what band you're using it, and so on you should have a tone uh, generally when folks set up a repeater and they have an input tone they also transmit the same tone on the output it serves two purposes the first purpose is to let the mobiles use receive squelch tone squelch on their receive so they only hear uh, the signals from the repeater which makes sense and the second is to kind of effectively broadcast what the tone is for the repeater um, of course the downside of that is it's very easy for somebody to figure out what the access tone is and uh, use that by simply listening to the repeater output and decoding the tone or the code, what have you. Um, if you use a split, which means a different tone is required to open the repeater and then the repeater transmits a second tone. Um, modern radios have the capability to transmit one tone and receive another one. so. You still get that functionality of, um, you know, having the, the mobiles and the portables on the system only hear the signals from the repeater, while at the same time, see, there you go. And at the same time, 
again, if this is if you're using a split tone setup, you're not broadcasting whatever the tone is to access. Now, granted, yes, yeah, somebody could brute force it, you know, try every single tone. There's only 50 or 51 uh, CTCSS or, or, you know, PL tones. There's, you know, really only 83 DCS codes. Uh, some radios will have you think there's a thousand or a thousand twenty four uh, or you know I can run zero two three ECS or I can run it inverted well here's the problem with that is it opens up the door to falsing way too much falsing I don't mess I don't use DCS in general um, that's one of the reasons why is false. Now, yep, CTCSS is playing the false as well. Uh, and there's a couple, well, not a couple, but there's a few tones that are a lot more prone to falsing than others. And I avoid using those. So, uh, the big ones... Uh, the big ones would be... Um, 74.4 and 77.0. Um, let's see what else. 118.8 because it's very close to the second harmonic of 60 hertz. So if you have a transmitter that's got a lot of AC, you know, 60 hertz hum in it, well, the second harmonic of that is 120, and that's pretty close to 118. So. avoid using those. The best practice is to use a tune roughly between 100 and 200. So, you know, you can go down to say 104.8, under 1.5, um, up to, you know, 192.8 or 203.5 or 206.5 or 196.6. You know, if you use, want to use one of the non-standard ones, Using tones above 200 hertz generally produces a little bit of a hum. You can usually kind of hear it in the background, uh, depending on the radio. Some some folks can hear it, other folks can't. It, it's, it's some people don't really care. Uh, again, that's personal preference. But when you're looking at, say, you start at 100 and you stop at 203.5. You're looking at, you know, 100, 103. Those look like they're getting carried. I mean, that's still a lot of times. Let's uh, cut this video for now and we'll pick it up in a second.